Now let's talk about reversible and irreversible processes. You may recall in the first part of this lecture, we had an example of PV work where we reversibly took a state, a state of a gas or a system of a gas from the state 2 liter to 1 liter at constant temperature. And that was a reversible step. Reversible, recall from that lecture, the change from initial to final state occurs by an infinite number of infinitesimal changes. So if we look at our example of PV work, here's our piston or frictionless piston. And uh, let's say, let's compress the gas. So let's press, press down here. And we're going to do in a series of steps to eventually going to say have the volume. So our first step is an infinitesimal step. Uh, let's give this x. So the steps are dx. And if you do an infinite number, we will eventually have the volume, infinite number of steps. So do 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 It'll take an infinite length of time to get there. So it's an idealization. So reversible processes, in a sense, are idealizations. Now let's take the opposite of reversible processes. That's called irreversible process. Uh, let's take an example of that using our PV work kind of thing here. And so here we have like this. Here's our piston. And say on here, we have a certain weight. Okay, it's weight and that's pushing this piston down. Suddenly, in a zero time, we remove the weight. So now suddenly the pressure has decreased just instantaneously from one pressure to another. And now the volume is going to uh, change. The, in fact, the piston is going to go up. The volume of the gas or the system here is going to increase. So that's an example of a irreversible process. So the change from the initial to final state occurs by a finite number of incremental steps. In this case, it's just one step, and suddenly the pressure changed. Uh, why is this important? Well, sometimes you can calculate a change in a reversible process from one state to another, whereas it's more difficult for going from that same state to the same final state. It's more difficult to calculate irreversible processes. But however, remember, for certain things like internal energy, those are state functions which depend only on the initial and final states. So it doesn't matter whether you go from the initial to final state by an irreversible process or reversible process. For a state function, the change in the state function is the same. It doesn't depend upon the path you take. All right, so keep those things in mind. They'll especially be useful when we talk about the second law of thermodynamics. But, uh, let's look at an example here. Let's do two changes. Here's our initial state, which is some pressure. Let me change the ink color here to say black. Uh, so we have some pressure, some initial pressure and some volume here. That's our initial state. Oh, actually I wrote that, initial state. And then here we have our final state. We have uh, P2 and V2. And our final state's like this. Now let's go from the initial state to the final state by two processes. First, we're just going to say, dump a weight on here so we're suddenly going to change the pressure and instantaneously then the volume is going to change here we do a bioreversible process going from here to here instead of just dumping a weight we put an infinitesimal weight on here so it goes an infinitesimal amount now we put another infinitesimal weight here it goes an infinitesimal amount down and so on and eventually with an infinite number of infinitesimal weights you'll get to your final state so is the system's work larger in a reversible process? Here's the reversible process or the irreversible process when you go like this. Well, let's see if we can answer that question. Now um, we reduce the graph on the previous slide right here. So this is pressure and this is volume. Here's our initial state. Here's our final state. So we're going to go down like this suddenly and then go across here. So that will be our irreversible process. And um, oh, let's try a different color uh, ink for the reversible process. Let's try yellow. Of course, this won't show up here. And this then will be the reversible process. Note the reversible process is a smooth curve. Irreversible process is jagged. So which uh, process will give us uh, the greater amount of work? Let's go back to white. 
So recall that work is minus the integral of p dv. So qualitative way of looking at this is the area, or say I say minus the area under a plot or a graph of p versus v. Because remember integrals are summations essentially when you we talked about differentials when you talk about integrals you're summing over deltas but in fact delta eventually becomes infinitesimal dv and then you have the integral. Alright so let's look at the area underneath the PV diagram for this. There we go. Something like that. So the integral of PDV for the irreversible process is like that. Let's look at the area uh, let's uh, do this yellow for the reversible process. Ooh, we get lots more area under the curve for the reversible process. So the reversible process more work. So if you're looking at trying to get some work out of a system or do work on the system you can get a lot more work by going by a reversible path or as reversible as you can make it rather than an irreversible uh, path. 